No? Worth a shot. I guess we're actually going to have to solve it. The Wi-Fi password is the first six digits of the answer to this integral. Let's get the Wi-Fi. Let's start by expanding the brackets and separating the integral into two. One half is a constant. Let's take it outside the second integral. And now we can focus on each of the two integrals separately. The first one looks complicated. There doesn't seem to be a substitution that'll allow us to find the antiderivative here. The good news, though, is that the interval of integration is symmetric, meaning we have the integral from negative a to a of some f of x. Why is this special? Because this integral is always zero if the function is odd. Recall from my video on odd functions and even functions that the graph of an odd function is symmetric about the origin. If you wanted to find the integral from negative a to a, a symmetric interval, then you would be finding this shaded area. Notice that you have two chunks that have the same area magnitude but the opposite sign because one part is below the x-axis and the second part is above, meaning that the total area will always be zero. So, if the integrand we have is an odd function, then we don't even need to find the antiderivative. The integral will just vanish. Okay, so how can we check if the integrand is odd? An odd function satisfies the equation f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So let's see if our integrand function passes this test. If we set f of x to x cubed times cosine of x over 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared, then f of negative x will be the same thing, just replace every x with negative x. The cube of negative x is the negative of the cube of x. Cosine itself is an even function, meaning the negative version of the input results in the same output as the positive version. So you can just remove the negative sign from the input and cosine will retain its value. The square of negative x is the square of x, so this part in itself is also even. Overall, notice that f of negative x is just the negative version of f of x. So the integrand is indeed an odd function. The integral is just zero. So we only need to worry about the second part in this sum, namely the integral of 4 minus x squared under the root from negative 2 to 2. This integral is much easier, and finding an antiderivative is not challenging. We can use trigonometric substitution, a method I've demonstrated multiple times already. However, we actually don't need to find the antiderivative here as well. Why? Because the integrand is actually the equation of the upper half of a circle whose radius is 2. So, this definite integral from negative 2 to 2 is just the area of this semicircle, which we can find using basic geometry. If you don't know why this is the equation of the upper half of the circle, let me show you. The equation of the full circle is x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. Agreed? 2 squared is 4. And now to find y in terms of x, let's take x squared to the other side and then take the square root of both sides to solve for y. Let's not forget the plus or minus. Now, the positive square root is the upper half of the circle, and the negative square root is the lower half. We have the positive version of the square root here, so this is why the graph is the upper part. The area of the semicircle, which is the integral from negative 2 to 2 of this square root, is pi times the radius squared over 2. This works out to be 2 pi. Now, let's not forget that we have a 1 half outside the integral, 
So the final answer will be one half of two pi, which is pi. So this entire integral works out to be pi. And now it comes down to whether or not you know a few decimal places of pi by heart. Honestly, I only know the first five decimal places, so I made the question the first six digits. Otherwise, it was the first ten, and I honestly don't know them by heart. 3.14159. 3 